Okay, I thought that I'd also go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples of the problems that the other problem that you guys are all missing, and that's finding the mean and standard deviation of a linear combination of random variables. So let's do a couple of uh, examples. These are from Chapter 7. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. We'll, we'll start with, um, oh, let's call a random variable r, whose mean is equal to 4 and whose standard deviation is equal to 3. And another random variable call a j, whose mean is equal to 5 and whose standard deviation is equal to um, 4. Okay? If we create a new random variable, let's call it t, which is a linear combination of r and j, and all that really means is that there's a coefficient in front of each of the variables. Whoops, I didn't mean 2x. I meant 2r plus 3j. Here's our new random variable t. The mean of t is equal to 2 times the mean of r plus 3 times the mean of j. And then just plug in the numbers. 2 times 4 plus 3 times 5. So that's 8 and 15 is 23. Now, when you're dealing with standard deviation, for problems like this, you always deal with variance, not standard deviation. Okay, that's what everybody's, one of the things everybody's missing. The variance of t is equal to 2 squared times the variance of r. 2 squared plus 3 squared times the variance of j. Notice how the sigma is squared, so is the coefficient. That's squared also. Plug in what you know. 4 times 9 plus 9 times 16 and 36 plus 144, let's see, plus 36 is equal to 180. Okay, that is your variance of t. Your standard deviation of t is the square root of 180. Okay, and that's how you do these problems. It's just, it's simple algebra. Okay, there's no reason for people to be missing these questions. So, you're not going to miss them anymore. Let's take a look at another example. Let's suppose we have two more random variables, x, whose mean is equal to 2, and whose standard deviation is equal to 3, and y, whose mean is equal to 4, and whose standard deviation is equal to 4. Let's create a new random variable that is the average of x and y. This is similar to a problem on the last test. New variable, let's call it a for average is equal to x plus y divided by 2, because that's how you find the average, add them up, divide by 2. If I rewrite this so that it looks like coefficient variable, coefficient variable, the 1 half just basically spreads, gets spread to the x and the y. So this is the coefficient of the x, this is the coefficient of the y. Mean of a is equal to 1 half mean of x plus one-half mean of y. Mean of x is, we just plug in what we know, so one-half times two plus one-half times four, which is equal to uh, three. Remember, we're going to deal with variance here, is equal to one-half squared variance of x plus one-half squared variance of y which is equal to 1 fourth times 9 plus 1 fourth times 16. Okay, and I just substituted the 1 half squared is the 1 fourth. The sigma 3 squared is 9. That's where the 9 came from. Same thing over here. So that's going to be 9 fourths plus 4. Okay, so that's going to be 25 fourths. And the standard deviation of a is the square root of 25 fourths, which is equal to 5 halves. So that was funny how that turned out. Okay, now let's look at one more example. Okay, we're going to throw a minus sign in here because that caused people a lot of grief. Uh, two more random variables. Let's call it b, where the mu of b is equal to 2, the standard deviation of b is equal to 3, and c, where the mu of c is equal to 4, and the standard deviation of c uh, is equal to 2. Let's find a new random variable. Let's call it w, 
such that W equals B minus C. That minus, don't let that mess you up, okay? What we're really talking about is this random variable. B plus a negative C. See, there's a negative 1 in front of that C. That's the coefficient. B plus negative 1 times C. Okay, you always want a plus in there. What do you have to do to the coefficients to make it a plus? The mean of W is equal to the mean of B plus negative 1 times the mean of C. Plug in what you know. 2 plus negative 1 times 4 is equal to negative 2. For the variance, okay, this is the variance of B. Notice the coefficient here is 1, so we don't really have to deal with it. Variance of B plus negative 1 squared times the variance of C. That coefficient gets squared. When it gets squared, it makes it positive. You should never, ever, ever have minus signs in your variance formula. You never subtract variances. So that's um, variance of B plus variance of C. You never have variances there, or never have um, subtractions in your variance formulas. So that's equal to 9 plus 4 is 13. And so the standard deviation of W is square root of 13. And that's how you do these problems.